In light of the rumors around the now at least 40 odd letters into the 1922 committee, at least according to the rumors, we have to ask a serious question. Is Rishi Sunak doomed? But first of all, let's relive, shall we say, the highlights of, of Rishi Sunak's career. How on earth did he end up at this point to be in a position of where he is absolutely going to lose the next general election, where he can do nothing in his party, where he, he is such a weak leader? He cannot even dare get rid of troublemakers, give his cabinet a serious reshuffle, because if he did, well, he might get some serious pushback. And as we've discussed before, Rishi Sunak is such a weak leader. Well, put it this way, a stick of wet celery could probably do a better job of leading the Conservative Party at this point. But before we go into the history, the rise, and what will be a great fall for this, well, meteoric rise almost into the Conservative Party. And bear in mind, we have seen plenty of historic rises and falls in the Conservative Party just in the last six years alone. But that's just how crazy UK politics really has been for the past couple of years. Honestly, a, a bit of normalcy and boredom might actually be a good thing for our politics, at least for a while. But before we go into that, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a rotation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well, buy me coffee. And of course, there is the YouTube thank you button. And of course, the Pony Club down below. So, Rishi Sunak, where did he come from? How did he get to be the UK's Prime Minister? Well, really, no one knew who this person was until he was picked by Boris Johnson. Those of you who may remember far, far back enough when Johnson came in, uh, he was having a bit of a, a, a fight not only just with, at the time, uh, Sajid, uh, Sajid Javid, but also Dominic Cummings, who were up in arms that, uh, that Javid was trying to have and select his own advisors as, you know, Minister of the Treasury. And of course, Johnson, and especially Dominic Cummings, couldn't have that. So he had to go. And remember, at the time, this was the Johnson government. This was the man who had to choose people who were not going to show him up. People who were not going to upstage him because Johnson wanted that limelight. He was the center stage all the time. No one could dare share his limelight unless they were at the fringes clapping for him, saying what a good prime minister and what a good boy he was doing his job. And of course, in comes Rishi Sunak, this unknown, completely unknown, but according to everyone at the time, was a financial whiz kid. And Johnson gave him the job. Why? Because from all intents and purposes, he was pliable. He would do as he was told. And he did exactly as he was told. And then, of course, along comes the pandemic. And one of the two things that Rishi Sunak would, would make his name for were, of course, first of all, the furlough scheme, but by all accounts of what we've heard at that time, had to be very, very much pushed into actually doing the furlough scheme uh, to begin with. And then, of course, the eat out to help out scheme, where he named, or at least gained the moniker of Dishi Rishi, because apparently... Sometimes, you know, uh, chancellors of the Exchequer have to have, you know, a sex appeal to them. But that was a thing. <laughs> that was a whole thing. And of course, both these two programs, while furlough, of course, helped save thousands of people's lives, um, 
and at least kept thousands of people uh, of jobs, shall we say, not, not not lives, but jobs, and kept them in work because of the furlough scheme, and well, probably did prevent did save people's lives because, well, now they weren't being forced into work. They could, you know, stay at home and not spread the virus around and potentially, you know, infect friends and family and and who knows what else that could happen because of that. And then eat out to help out. Um, Was it successful? Was it good? Well, restaurants on the whole, seem to think it was a good idea to try and, you know, attract people out, trying to get the economy moving again. Overall, at that time, while restaurants may have somewhat benefited from this, it was hardly a stomping success. But those two events alone were what catapulted Rishi Sunak into his stardom. And Boris did not like that. You may remember the constant rumors of how much Boris was hating Sunak because all these things that Sunak was doing, Boris felt he should get the credit. And there were rumors that Boris might just get rid of Sunak. But everyone else in the party could see that Sunak was on the on the surface doing some good, doing some good. And oh, he was all very, very popular. And then, of course, came the fall of Boris Johnson. Very much, as people forget, because Rishi Sunak quit. However, he was not the first person to quit. It was Savid uh, Savid Javid who quit first, who stood up in the Commons and gave his own very much rebuking address of the whole Johnson government, the absolute mess that Johnson had done. Sunak, on the other hand, did not stand up in Parliament and give his own address. He merely sent his resignation letter at the time saying that he could not continue to work for Johnson. And then, of course, came the first leadership contest, to one of which Sunak was very, very much slow off the mark. Liz Truss had beaten him to it. Oh, Bob <laughs> beaten him to it completely. She was well off the mark and flying, even though we know full well that Sunak had websites and all kinds of stuff ready to go at a moment's notice. But he lost that, partly because, well, Sunak might have come across competent to his fellow Conservative MPs, which got him to the final two. But when it came to, shall we say, wowing the rest of the Tory party to to vote for him, well, Liz Truss said everything the Tory party wanted to hear. And Sunak couldn't seem to bring himself to even do that. And of course, we got the disaster of Liz Truss, which then ushered in very quickly the the Prime Minister, really, that the Tory MPs in particular wanted, even though the rest of the party might not have wanted him. And then, since then, we have lurched from one just disaster after another of Sunak not putting forward any policy, any uh, serious ideas to try and solve the current problems of the UK, because he doesn't have any serious ideas to help and sort out the UK. Because all his ideas were very, very much, at least in a similar flavour and vein to that of Liz Truss. Of course, Freeport's Rishi Sunak's big uh, star and pet project as well. But as we've reported on the Tyne Freeport, not seeming to be, shall we say, covering itself in glory at all. Not only that, there are other scandals brewing in place around Sunak at the moment. These could very easily turn into big national scandals. And that is very likely what could happen. And as we said at the beginning of this video, there are now 40, 40 letters in with Sir Graham Bradley, the head of the 1922 committee, complaining, uh, saying, we want, <laughs> we are not confident in our leader. And in the current state of play, only 55 are needed to trigger such a leadership contest. Meaning that at the Tory conference, Sunak has to give the performance of a lifetime. And in a month, 
in less than a month, actually start to deliver on those promises he promised at the Tory conference. Because if not, then the Tories will get rid of him. After all, remember, there's still technically a full year ahead. Might, if we change leaders, maybe someone new, more competent, someone who can actually do something, although that's highly doubtful, <laughs> you know, change the fortunes of the party, much as we had placed all those hopes on Rishi Sunak. It's very doubtful. And remember, October the 26th is when Rishi Sunak's protection comes up. So, could Sunak find himself facing a leadership challenge? It is highly likely. Sunak is a weak leader. He hasn't really done anything, nor has he managed to reverse the fortunes of the Tory party. And we've always said it very clearly. When the Tory party knows that their leader is, well, dead in the water, that's when the sharks will come because that is what they have been doing for the past six years. And sooner or later, those sharks are going to come for Sunak. And they're already starting from what we can hear, at least what we understand from the stuff coming out from Westminster at the moment. They're starting to circle. So is Rishi Sunak doomed? Oh, absolutely. But the question is, what could happen first? A general election or a Tory rebellion? We'll just have to wait and see. But nonetheless, things could be out to get very, very interesting. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. And, of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.